Want to smoke ribs on your Weber kettle grill? It doesn't have to be that hard. Let me show you how easy it is. So we first, of course, have to start off with our ribs. Now I'm using these pork baby back ribs because I have small hands and a small appetite. They have a great flavor and don't take as long to cook. Plus they were on sale for about 14 bucks. Now I'm going to show you something I do to get my ribs prepped. First, I'm going to cut away this weird little fat flap. Ain't nobody trying to eat that. Next, I'm going to remove the thin membrane from the back of the ribs. Now this is optional, but I feel it makes for a better rib eating experience. Now if you leave the membrane on, it will make the back portion of your ribs all chewy. Plus, the membrane can block some of the seasoning from getting into your ribs. The membrane is very easy to remove. First, grab yourself a damp paper towel. You can easily find the membrane by using a paper towel to pull at a corner of the rib. Once you start pulling at it, it tears away pretty easily. Now that that business is done, I'm gonna cut my slab of ribs in half. First, this makes them easier to handle and it will make them fit on my kettle grill a little better. Now, before we get to seasoning, can you please do your girl a favor and hit those like and subscribe buttons? Thank you so much. All right, so now I have two separate pieces that are easier to work with and fit in my rectangular pan. I'm gonna start by rubbing my ribs with yellow mustard. Now don't act all crazy about it and drag me in the comments. The mustard just acts as a binder to allow the dry rub and seasoning to stick to the ribs a little better. Don't worry, your ribs won't taste like mustard because the mustard taste will vaporize during the cooking process. The next thing I'm gonna add is brown sugar. Now the sugar will help keep the ribs tender and adds a nice sweet balance to the spiciness of the rub. And I'm gonna cheat a little and use a seasoning blend instead of grabbing 10 different jars of spice. Now I'm using a blend that's great for ribs. It includes chili pepper, smoked paprika, salt, oregano, and a bunch of other flavorful spices. Now rub in all of your seasoning and then flip and do the same thing on the other side. Mustard, brown sugar, then seasoning. Now that my ribs are all seasoned up, I'm gonna place them in a Ziploc bag and place in a fridge. They can hang out in there and marinate while I get my grill ready. Now keep watching because I'm gonna share my tip to keep your grill temperature even and to help your ribs from becoming a dry mess. I get my coal ready by using a chimney starter. I haven't used charcoal lighter fluid in over a decade because it makes your food taste like gas, yuck. When I made this video, I realized how beat up my current chimney starter was. So I've since purchased a new Weber model. I'll drop a link in the description if you wanna check it out. Anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and load this bad boy up with charcoal and light it up. After about 15 minutes, my charcoal is ready. You can tell because they are now mostly gray with ash instead of black. I've slid on my trusty heat resistant glove. So now I can release the hot charcoal into the grill. Now, this is a stick that my son picked up walking from middle school one day. I'd say it's held up pretty well since he's now almost 20 years old. I'll go ahead and use my specialized tool to divide the charcoal in two halves. That way I can have space in the middle to place my secret weapon. Now this pan is going to go right into the space I made in the middle. Now my ribs are going to be placed directly over this grill pan and not the coals so we can have indirect heat. You you don't want to cook ribs directly over your coals because they'll cook too quickly and they'll be tough and dry. We want tender ribs, not rawhide. Now when I poured my lit charcoal, you may have noticed it wasn't really a ton of briquettes. Well, this was done on purpose. I'm gonna add some unlit charcoal on top of that lit charcoal. They'll eventually catch on and ignite from the lit charcoal. This will help maintain my grill temperature as the older charcoal burns off. I'm now adding water to my furrow pan. The water will help keep the temperature of the grill remain at a constant temperature that isn't extremely hot. As you may already know, the secret to great taste in ribs is to cook them slow and low. The pan will also catch any drippings from the ribs as they cook, which will make cleanup a whole lot easier. Now, I'm just waiting to get my grill to the proper temperature for my ribs. My goal is to keep the grill temp between 325 and 350 degrees. I find that at this temperature, my ribs always turn out tender and flavorful, yet they don't take hours and hours to cook. Now, in less than 10 minutes, my grill temp is at about 370 degrees per the handy thermometer on my Weber kettle grill. Now this temp is good enough. Remember, my goal temp was between 325 and 350 degrees. The temperature would decrease to a temp closer to my goal as I open a lid and add my ribs. 
All right, now let's cook some ribs. Now I'm earling my grill grate with a little canola oil. This prevents any food placed on the grill from sticking. It's easy enough. I just fold a paper towel over a few times and dip it in a little cup of canola oil. I use my tongs to hold it so I won't burn myself. My ribs that have been marinating in the fridge are looking pretty good and the grill is hot and ready. You always wanna cook ribs on a grill with the bone facing downwards. Remember, we wanna cook the ribs nice and slow. If you place them with the meaty side down, then the meat will cook too quickly, resulting in, you guessed it, a tough rack of ribs and a banishment from the family grill. At this point, my ribs have been on the grill for about 20 minutes. As you can see, even with the meat side up and not facing a heat source, the ribs are being smoked and cooked from the indirect heat of the grill. And yes, I've added some chicken legs to the grill. There's no need to waste that good direct heat over the coals. And plus, my wife doesn't eat pork, so I had to hook up with some vittles. After about 10 more minutes, I check my ribs just to make sure that they're cooking evenly. Now, one of the sides look a little shady, like it's cooking a little more quickly. So I'm gonna move these guys around. Now this is quite common when you have ribs that are more or less meaty in some areas. All right, now never mind this part. My chicken drumsticks are ready, so I'm gonna baste them with a little barbecue sauce and pull them off the grill. Like I told you before, no grill space goes to waste with me. So it's now been a little over an hour and our baby back ribs are about done. I checked the smaller rack of ribs first. I can tell they're done because of how easy they have been back and forth when I hold and shake them with my tongs. The other larger rack is still a little more stiff, so I'll leave those on just a little longer. I will, however, check it with my little digital thermometer just to see how close this rack is to being done. I'm looking for about 190 to about 200 degrees. So as you can see, we're not quite there yet. Now, since my smaller rack of ribs is actually done, I'll go ahead and move it over to direct grilling over the coals. Now, this is just so I can get some nice grill marks. I'll only leave them here for a few minutes because I don't want them to burn over this high heat. All right, so I got some good grill marks on my ribs. So now I'm gonna baste my smaller rack with some barbecue sauce. I'll flip it over to make sure both sides of the ribs get some barbecue sauce love. Now I place the grill cover on for about five minutes to let that barbecue sauce caramelize. This gets the sauce nice and sticky so it clings to the ribs. Now this smaller rack is now done and ready to come off the grill. Now don't forget, we had that other half of ribs that wasn't quite to my ideal temp of 190 to 200 degrees yet. Now after about 10 more minutes, they're now reading at an optimal temp, but not before they had to shed a grill with this cast iron pan of potatoes. Now after repeating the same barbecue sauce basting process that I did for the smaller rack of ribs, these bad boys join up with their other half for rib perfection, if I do say so myself. Now once they're all cut up, the only thing left to do is to get the grubbing. Now I really enjoyed making this video and I sure hope you learned a lot. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more food, cookware, and cooking related content. Peace.